Welcome to Connecting Hawaii Business on ThinkTech Hawaii. My name is Kathleen Lee, owner of Kathleen Lee Consulting, and I am your host for this program. ThinkTech Hawaii is currently live streamed on thinktechhawaii.com as well as on ThinkTech Hawaii's Facebook and YouTube channel. And for viewers out there who would like to ask us questions during the show, you may email them to us at questions at thinktechhawaii.com. I am excited for today's show since this is our last Connecting Hawaii business for the year before we launch into the new year. And I have my friend, the executive director of Bike Share Hawaii, to talk about updates on the Bike Share program, Todd Boulanger. Hey, Todd. Hey, Aloha. Thanks for having me and, um, and thanks for the hard, hard work that ThinkTech does in exploring relevant issues to Hawaii. Of course, and thank you for everything that Beaky does. I understand that you have been on ThinkTech's um, shows a couple of times before, but let's go ahead and introduce you anyway. Yeah. Tell the viewers about yourself. Yeah, I think this is my third time, but yes. So I'm uh, Todd Boulanger. I am a transportation professional, um, UH uh, Manoa grad. Um, I'm currently the executive director of uh, Bike Share Hawaii, which is the nonprofit that oversees um, the bike share system in Honolulu, which is called Biki. Um, we only exist to fulfill that contract for the city and keep the bikes rolling in Honolulu. And um, yeah, that's about it. Um, Beaky brought me back to Honolulu after about uh, 20 years working on the mainland in uh, Europe and uh, the Middle East. That's wonderful. And thank you for sharing um, the 2020 annual report with us as well. So let's go over that just to give sure. viewers in our community um, out there a, an update. If we can pull up the first graphic, Todd, could you go over the ridership data for the last year, especially during a year of COVID, yes. Yeah, so um, which page is that you're referring to? Is that four? Fourth one. So it's the okay. one with the pie chart that talks about the ridership. Yeah. So um, prior to COVID, um, Bike Share Hawaii was running, we, were, we had about 1.4 uh, million uh, rides for the year. Um, and what that typically broke down to was about um, 100 to 120,000 rides per month. Uh, most bike share systems in the US, that's their annual total, not monthly. Um, other than the five major systems, you know, Boston, New York, DC, San Francisco, um, and Chicago. So Beaky is the sixth most utilized system um, in the US uh, as per NACTO rankings over several years. That is until COVID. So we haven't seen the data nationally since COVID, um, but COVID affected Beaky just like it affected most other scooter sharing and bike sharing and transit systems in the US. We went from a strong start to the year 2020, which was about uh, 110 to 120,000 rides, dropped way down to almost 30,000 rides within two weeks. Um, and that was the that was the lockdown um, that uh, appeared in this uh, in the state of Hawaii in uh, March. And for those who may not remember, um, tourist arrivals went from I believe thirty thousand a day at the um, Honolulu uh, International Airport to about uh, three hundred during that same that same month period. Um, and so for the year, um, Beaky came out to about. That was 830,000 rides for 2020. Um, 630,000 were members, typically Kama Aines and residents, and just 200,000 were visitors and uh, other casual users. And so um, the system though used less became more and more important for Kama Aines for their essential trips around town. Um, when the system started in 2017, um, there was about between 50 to 60 percent of the rides were um, tourists in the first three months. Um, during COVID, 80 percent of the rides were um, Kamaainas and residents. 
Oh, wow. Um, what would you account that increase to? Uh, why well, primarily, yeah. people not coming in, I guess. If that's a huge one. Yeah, pr primarily people found that, you know, there, in a sense, I like to describe Beaky as like having four membership bases, like four legs of the stool. Um, you know, the dominant leg is tourism when it's active. That's typically about 25 to 30 percent of our users. Uh, and then the other three legs are typically locals, um, you know, the downtown office folks. Then you have the, 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 the university districts. You know, we have Beakey's at uh, HPU, UH Manoa, and the KCC campus. And then um, the other major leg are people that, you know, typically don't own a car or are what we call in the business car light. And they typically, you know, have moved to Kaka'ako or, um, Kapahulu district or Waikiki and they don't they don't or can't really own a car there's no parking it's too expensive you know maybe the car their spouse uses the only car their family has and so Biki is their backup car or their main car depending on their situation and so during COVID deep COVID we had primarily those folks who had really no other option they didn't want to ride the bus um, you know we we polled our members in June of 2020 and 80, over 80% 80 of them said they were still riding Beaky because they felt it was the safest form of shared transportation available to them. You know, they didn't want to be in a small enclosed Uber, you know, taxi or bus at that time. I can see that because I, um, looking at the statistics, I see that um, some of the most frequently used Beaky stops are around my neighborhood, which is the Alamana Kaka Ako area. Um, yeah, you were talking about usage. What were some challenges that you um, and the organization ran into, aside from you know, like ridership dropping in general, but increasing for locals? But what were some challenges that you folks faced during COVID? Well, especially, I mean, um, you're the let's see, you're the board member for the um, the Kaka'ako neighborhood board. So you you really know the, the neighborhood well. So I'll, I'll focus on what you might have seen. Um, a lot of places were closed. You know, a lot of the destinations that um, a lot of the offices, restaurants, and even parks were closed. And so people didn't have places that they could legally go to. Um, and so for the initial three to, yeah, I'd say two to three months, we saw longer rides because people were riding um directly to their destination they weren't using the trip chain with a bus trip um they were riding for recreation because the parks were closed um or they were having to ride farther to get to a destination because maybe um their local their local bank branch was closed you know i'm um a first hawaiian bank member and our ward branch has been closed for almost two years now so um now I have to go downtown. So these COVID has kind of had these ripple effects through a lot of our neighborhood services. And so that does affect how long it takes people to go get to places if you can't do it digitally, say. Um, the other, I think the other challenges were, um, it wasn't traffic. I mean, in a sense, that was a positive challenge. Um, there was a lot less cars being driven on the streets during the first part of COVID. And so there was a lot more street space. I mean, I saw a lot of people riding their beakies and their personal bikes on Alamoana slash Nimitz Highway. I mean, there wasn't uh, enough traffic to fill uh, three lanes, let alone just one. So that was a positive challenge. Um, and that led to great events like the open streets that uh, the city and HBL had in Waikiki. Um, later, in late COVID, we had some vandalism show up, but that was really kind of, that's really been more of a, a 2021 issue than a 2020 issue. Um, and, uh, but yeah, I think, I think the major, I think the major 2020 issues were just access to services and places to go. You know, once people felt they could go out, you know, a lot of people I think were under the, the mental lockdown also they didn't you know they, they hunkered down they stayed inside this is before you know vaccines before they felt they had permission to kind of explore the city um you know our office was open seven days a week throughout covid and even you know even today so um 
you know, we once we were deemed an essential service, you know, we didn't look back for 2020. Let, let's talk about that real quick. So um, when it comes to vandalism, and I think you mentioned um, before the show that theft was one of the issues as well. When that happens to um, the Beaky bikes, how does like how does it affect one the the organization and and what mm. can people do if if let's say they run out of Beaky and then it it gets vandalized, tampered with, or stolen during the time of their rental? What can they do to kind of alleviate that, or what's the first thing they should do? I guess. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's just it just I mean, Beaky is like a library book. I mean, it's a shared public resource that we ask that people take care of when it's in their use, and so. I would say the, the 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 typical the typical problem arises when a member you know borrows the Beaky bike from a kiosk and they don't return it successfully to the dock. You know they don't look for the green light; they just listen, which is not what they should do. Or worse, they may leave it outside of a store. I mean, it's 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 always shocking how many people report that their Beaky has been been stolen while they were in a Seven Eleven or an ABC store. And you know, you, you you wouldn't you wouldn't leave your child in a in a stroller outside the store, nor should you leave your beaky like that. You know, don't abandon your beaky. Um, and so, what what that happens, then the bike becomes lost in a sense. You know, we we can track them to some extent, but um, once they're outside of our control, then they become damaged. They can, people vandalize them. They may paint them, thinking they're camouflaged, but you know, it's like painting a, it's like painting an elephant uh, pink. You know, people know it's an elephant. <laughs> you know, there's there's no use to painting a beaky. There's no use to taking the fenders off in the basket. I mean, it's still a beaky. So, you know, please don't vandalize the beaky because you know maybe your auntie, your uncle, or your nephew need that beaky to get to work. You know, it's right. beaky. You know, it's like a city bus. You know. Either don't you know it's, if if you damage a city bus, it's not there for your use. And you know we've been able to keep Kamaaina fares at you know fifteen dollars per month for unlimited thirty minute rides since day one. You know we're now in our fifth year, and that is the most affordable mobility option, shared mobility option in the in the city in the city center. So um, vandalism costs don't help that. Gotcha. We are about to go on break soon, but Todd, when we come back, I would love for you to go over some of the milestones that um, Bike Share Hawaii and, and the, the Beaky Bike Share program um, hit between 2020 and 2021, as well as some of the financial summary that I think it would be great for viewers to know. Um, I am under the impression that some folks out there may think that a lot of Beaky's funding comes from government grants. So I, I love that you have um, a chart that we can show later on. So when we return, Todd will go over those details. We'll be right back. I'm Mitch Ewan, host of Hawaii, the state of clean energy on Think Tech Hawaii. Hawaii, the state of clean energy is about following the many clean energy initiatives in Hawaii. Hawaii, the state of clean energy appears weekly on Think Tech Hawaii at 4 p.m. on Wednesdays. Thank you so much for watching our show. We'll see you then. Aloha.
Welcome back to Connecting Hawaii Business. On today's show, we have Todd Boulanger, Executive Director of Bike Share Hawaii. When we left off, he was discussing the um, some of the challenges that Bike Share Hawaii faced in 2020 and parts of 2021. Now, Todd, could you talk about some milestones that you're proud of as far as um, Biki and Bike Share Hawaii hitting this year and 2020? Yeah, so. So as a small nonprofit that uh, oversees the, the, the Biki system, um, I would say I was most proud that we rose to uh, the challenge that the city, that the mayor Caldwell, when he gave us and characterized uh, or defined us as an essential service. And so instead of closing down like many systems did or pulling in half the stations for 2020, we stayed fully open. Um, additionally, none of our staff members got COVID. You know, we, we had a very strict sanitation and cleaning protocol throughout the, the office and, and our equipment. And I know it, COVID had tragically struck many people, especially bus operators uh, in Honolulu. And, and thankfully, knock on wood, we're still healthy. Um, and as a small system, if you know, any one of our staff had had COVID and shut down the office, it, you know, our customers would have definitely been uh, drastically impacted by the, uh, the quality of the service. Um, I, I mean, I think the challenges for COVID were just keeping going. I mean, as with many small businesses, uh, the PPP through the U.S. Um, Small Business Administration was critical for our survival. Um, we did not, bike share is not like transit in the, in the eyes of the federal government. And so we did not get hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars like um, the FTA gave to um, uh, OTS and other uh, large urban systems. So we've been having to uh, just look to philanthropic grants to our sponsors. Uh, uh, All Nippon Airways was generous enough to to remain a sponsor during 2020, even though if they stopped flying here, we were the only local Honolulu entity they sponsored in 2020. So that was very gracious of them. Um, and then our support from the, the, the public health field, Hawaii Pacific Health, um, HMSA, uh, their sponsorship allowed us to continue operating to this day. Um, and I think the critical issue is, and you brought this up, Kathleen, is most people don't realize that the, that the Bike Share Hawaii, the nonprofit, um, does not receive any fees from the, um, the fare box revenue. You know, right. All the money. Let's, let's pull up yeah. the, the financial summary graphic so people can get yeah. um, a better idea of what you are talking about. Because I was right. actually surprised at the percentages of, of that pie chart. But if you can go over that to explain to viewers where Beaky's or Bike Share Hawaii's funding comes from. Yeah. So, um, so you know, stepping back. So, um, Bike Share Hawaii is the kind of the the overseer of the system. You know, we we serve the interests of the city, providing bike share. Um, providing all of the reporting requirements, the planning, community outreach, marketing. Additionally, we oversee the operations of the uh, for-profit operator. So all of the income from the system, you know, whenever you rent a bike uh, or pay a membership, that money goes to pay off the, the initial $5 million loan that the operator took out to start the system. You know, th those first hundred stations and a thousand bikes were not Funded by this, we're not funded by the federal government like buses are, or by the city. Um, you know that money came out of their pocket. Um, so the nonprofit, we have to seek government grants, or we have to seek um, business sponsorships, and th that's why you see uh, a few select uh, companies on the bikes. Um, again, All Nippon Airways, um, HEI, the the local electric company foundation. Um, Hawaii Pacific Health and others, those companies share the same vision of, of active transportation and, and, and uh, safe streets um, that Beaky does. And so their, their donations to us allow us to provide our, the community aspect, uh, the planning and the permitting and the, and the insurance that um, you know, modern businesses need to uh, operate. 
So if you look at the pie chart, um, 85% of our 2020 income came from these sponsorships. And those are um, corporate donations. We had one major grant from the, the Department of Health to study um, how Beaky could better serve um, expansion areas like Kalihi and other um, low to modest income uh, areas. And so we were ready to implement that um, right as COVID hit. And so that's another reason why we stayed open and not shut down so that we could serve um, folks that didn't, you know, can't afford to rent an Uber every time they go out or buy a car. Yeah, I can appreciate that. Um, I remember when Beaky first came out in 2017, and it was a period of my life when I didn't have a car for a whole year. And it was, to me, it was such, um, I was so grateful for its existence since I was able to go around my neighborhood. So I'm really, I'm really happy of the existence of the program in Honolulu. So let's pull up the community impacts graphic. And if you could go over that, Todd, to um, yeah. tell our community out there what differences Beaky has made. So the, the our annual reports are um, found on our website, gobeaky.org. Um, the community app. Um, impacts. And so I think the key impact of bike share is that whenever you ride a Beaky, you don't need to um, plant trees because you're, you're not having to mitigate uh, emissions from a motorized vehicle. You know, your, your Beaky trip is what, powered by whatever you ate that day, bananas, oatmeal, um, you know, whatever. And so you're not having to undo the emissions from a vehicle. So some of the environmental impacts that uh, Beaky helped with during um, 2020, we had over 13 million minutes of bike travel. And so that helps kind of humanize the, the streets in our core service area. Um, there's research called um, safety in numbers and that shows that drivers drive safer when they have to share the road with more and more pedestrians and cyclists, you know, they'll react to whatever's on the road. If there are no cyclists, then they drive like it's a highway. So those 13 million minutes um, led to equivalencies of avoiding 2 million pounds of carbon dioxide. So that's typically what you see in tailpipes and factories. Um, and those are global greenhouse gases that, you know, are affecting our island survival and, and the planet's survival. It avoided uh, over 130,000 gallons of fuel, gasoline typically being imported into this island. And a lot of our fuel comes from Korea and uh, other remote places that, um, you know, we have to spend a lot of our hard-earned money to you know, send to those far off places, be it, you know, Abu Dhabi and such. Additionally, those 13, those Beaky trips for 2020 were equivalent of removing 280 cars in the city center. So what I like to tell our friends in, in out of the North Shore and Waianae and other places, you know, even though you don't have don't yet have a Beaky station near your home, um, that doesn't mean that we're not making it easier for you when you're in town, because we don't expect you to Beaky from Waianae into the city. But, you know, for those folks that have to drive, we open up street space and, and parking space for those Kaka'ako people like Kathleen, who may, may be used to drive to um, the 7-Eleven to get our quarter milk and take up that lane space and that parking space, you know, but now, you know, she rides her Beaky. And so someone from North Shore can come in and find, you know, come in for their, their essential business trips or their medical trips or their whatever shopping trips and find life's a little easier for them. Um, and so that's really kind of how we help uh, Oahu, you know, as a whole. Um, in addition to the the six um, large neighborhoods that we currently serve. And for the those on on um, watching this, our service area is about eight miles wide, from um, the Home Depot out in Ivale, all the way um, Cocoa Head to um, the base of Diamond Head Crater and then up into Manoa Valley, up into, um, let's see, um, Makiki and such. So, and Waikiki, of course. 
That's awesome. I I think I mentioned this to you before, but I remember some friends and I went through a like a bike trip to figure out the distance of where all Beaky's tops were, and they're they're really conveniently located. So we can pull up that last graphic um, that shows the wonderful photos and contact info for Vicky. Todd, this is more of a question for you. So what lessons have you learned being at the helm of Bike Share Hawaii for the last couple of years? I would say, you know, so I've been in transportation mobility um, for 20 to 25 years, public, private, um, and now nonprofit, or previously also non- nonprofit. I think my biggest lesson learned is public-private partnerships take a lot of care and feeding. You know, they're they're often easy to enter into, but keeping them going, keeping multiple parties happy and engaged, I think is the biggest challenge. And um, you know, Beaky, the Beaky P3, I believe, is probably one of the the most recent experiences the city has with p3s and you know maybe even the state Uh, there aren't a lot out there and you know other than utilities um so i think you know this has been a lesson learned for all parties involved Um, let's pull up beaky's website uh because we have a few minutes left or actually a couple of minutes left todd is there anything else that you would like to add well other than just thanking our customers for sticking with us through, you know, the thick and thin of 2020 and 2021, I would say, you know, we are a nonprofit. And so just like a public radio um, or public TV, um, we live by donations. And so any of our customers, please uh, feel free to um, send us a donation. There's a link on our website. But additionally, we would love to um, showcase new businesses on our on our beaky bikes you know give them exposure while also helping us fund our community outreach activities because now that things are opening up we're starting with uh, more public events you know recently this last week with hbl we had a a free helmet giveaway and fitting at salt um you know six pillars was very helpful and uh kamehameha schools uh also helped host the event on their facility at salt so Again, business donations are really what keeps us going. Um, You know, we're looking forward to further working with the city and county of Honolulu on what is next for Beaky. You know, we're we're wrapping up our fifth year of operations. I mean, it's 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 difficult to imagine. We've already been up and running for for five years and over four million uh, trips, uh, which is like twenty six trips to the moon. and so in our discussions with the community and the city this, this next year uh, in 2022, we'll be, ask, we'll be talking about uh, expansion areas. We'll be uh, re-exploring uh, the electrification of our fleet, you know, adding electric beakies and electric stations, potentially even tying those, those electric beaky stations to EV charging stations. That's you know, a pilot we've been talking to HECO for a, quite a while. Um, additionally, the holo card, you know, the, the holo card has been as a as a longtime transit user, has been liberating. You know, I don't have to think about having coins in my my purse. Don't have to think about, you know, do I need to buy a day pass or just a single pass? You know, it does all that math, that hard math for me. But it would be great if you could have one one linked um, mobility pass. You know, tying Beaky with holo and so. You know, we're working with um, our partners on exploring those for the next next two two to three years of service. Well, thank you for coming on the show today, Todd, and giving everyone an update. On And on that note, we also would like to thank Jay Fidel and the staff at Think Tech Hawaii. We had Michael and Haley who helped us out today. Todd, can you hold that up again real quick just so we can see It's a little blurry. It. So, yeah, if you see a beaky, a lost... It's a little, please, it's a little blurry. Yeah, please call our customer service line 888-340-2454. That's 888-340-2454. Awesome. Thank you so much, Todd. And on that note, we will see you next time. Aloha. <laughs>